Hello, my name is Joshua Keith from Agility Communications Group. This video is designed to help you administer the users in your system and make necessary changes to keep your system current with web management. Today we are going to cover logging into the system, making changes to a user, making changes to a user's voicemail, adding speed dials and user buttons to a phone, and finally adding and removing users from the hunt group. To log into the IP Office Web Manager, open your internet browser and type in the IP address given to you by your installation or support engineer. Some browsers may require that you type in HTTP colon forward slash forward slash before you type in the IP address. The IP address for this phone system is 192.168.70.12. On this screen, you will see the Avaya logo and information about your system in the top left hand corner. Choose the hyperlink for IP Office Web Manager. The system will then ask you for a username and a password. Enter the credentials given to you by the Avaya engineer and press log in. Once you see the main page giving information on your phone system, you have been successfully logged into the phone system. To make changes to users, go to the Call Management tab of the navigation bar and then select Users. From here, we can make changes to any user in the phone system. In this example, we will be editing J Keith, which is extension 2700. To make changes to this user, move the cursor over to the edit symbol, which looks like a pencil, on the right side of the screen. From here, we are able to make several changes to the phone. We can change the name and the full name of this user. The name field is a shorthand ID that the system uses to identify the client by. The full name is used for directories so that people are able to find the user in the system. The password fields are next. These are used to set passwords for applications that interact with your phone like 1x Portal and Soft Console. The extension number identifies the physical extension that this user is associated with on the system. Next is the profile section. This allows us to apply user licenses to the end user. You will notice that when it is a basic user, in the application section we have multiple features that have been grayed out in the slider bars. These are not able because a license has not been applied. By changing the profile to a power user, we now see that we have these services enabled. To turn off the service, even if it is licensed, we can go to the slider bar and turn to no. If it says no, that means that the service is not enabled. If it is blue and says yes, that means the service has been enabled. After the profile section, we can take a look at the login codes. This is different than the password used to log into application. This code allows you to log in the physical phone. If the code has been forgotten, you may reset it here. Once you have made your changes, select update at the bottom of the screen. To make changes to a user's voicemail, choose the voicemail link on the left side of the user screen. From here, we can add or reset a voicemail code to help a user log into their voicemail box. The voicemail code should be at least four digits that do not repeat or are in order. In other words, do not use passwords like 1111 or 1234. The next box allows us to enter an email address. Voicemails are able to be emailed out as WAV files to each user. Here is where we define the user's email address so the emails know where to go. After entering the email address, we need to choose the voicemail to email mode. We have four choices. Off sends out no emails. The user must check their voicemail on the phone. Copy sends out an email and leaves it on the phone. This allows you to check your voicemails from either place. Forward sends the voicemail out and removes it from your phone. You will only be able to check it in your email. This keeps you from having to delete voicemails off your phone that you have already checked in your email. 
alert leaves the message on your phone, but sends an email out alerting you that you need to check your phone for new messages. There is no WAV file in the email for you to listen to. You will still only be able to hear the messages on your phone. Once you have made changes to the voicemail settings, choose Update at the bottom of the screen. We are able to add speed dials and user buttons to a phone by changing the button programming. Choose the button programming link on the left side of the screen to add and remove those features. In this view, we are able to see the buttons that are currently programmed onto the phone. It is important to know the amount of buttons available on your phone. The phone system will allow you to program more buttons than your phone physically has. In our example, we will be programming for a 9608 or a 9508 phone. These phones have three screens of eight buttons, for a total of 24 buttons. While the user only initially sees the first eight buttons, by scrolling to the right they will be able to view buttons 9 through 16. In order to make changes to a button, we will hit the edit symbol again. You will notice on buttons 4 through 8 that they have a lock symbol instead of the pencil symbol. This is because those buttons were programmed in the user rights menu. These buttons can only be changed by making changes in the user rights. All buttons with a pencil can be changed here in user programming. Let's start by programming a speed dial for an outside number on button 9. After we hit the edit symbol, a dialog box comes up asking us what kind of button we want to program. The first box is the label. This is what will show up on the phone for this button. We will label this button Agility. Next comes the action box. Once we click that, we will choose the dial option and press OK. In the data field, we need to enter the number that we want the phone to dial. Remember, you need to enter the number exactly like you would dial it from the phone. In this case, we will enter Agility's 1-800 support number. We have to enter a 9 because that is our code to access outside numbers. We also have to enter a 1 just like we would if we were dialing the number from our desk. Once we have entered the data, we will click on OK and the button has been added. Next, we will program a user button for button number 10. User buttons act as a speed dial, but also gives us the ability to see if the user is available to take a call. Just like programming our previous button, we will hit the edit symbol for the button in order to get the dialog box. Again, we can label the number as we need to. This time, in the action box, instead of dial, we will choose user. And then click OK. The user field this time is a drop down box. Instead of entering the number, we actually will just hit the drop down box and we will be able to choose a user from our phone system. Once we have chosen the user, we hit OK and now that button has been programmed as well. Now that we're here at the button programming screen and we have made our changes, we will hit update so that the phone system will save the changes. In order to make changes to hunt groups, go to the call management tab of the navigation bar, then select groups. This will bring up all the hunt groups in the system. From here, we can once again edit the groups by choosing the pencil icon. In this example, we will edit the main hunt group. In order to add a user, select Add Users on the right side of the screen. From here, you will have a dialog box that will allow you to search for users in your system. You can search by using the username or by entering the extension number. Once you find the user you are looking for, check the box to the left of their name and hit OK. As you can see, the user is now part of the hunt group. On the left side of the user list, you see an option for membership. When it says yes, this means that the person is logged into the hunt group and can receive calls. However, if we want someone to remain a part of the hunt group but to temporarily not get calls, we can hit this slider box and turn it off. A button can be programmed on their phones to do the same thing. When it's set to no, the user's phone will not receive hunt group calls. 
We can also remove the user from the hunt group by hitting the check mark box next to their name. And then we choose remove user. Once you have finished making changes, hit the update button at the bottom of the screen. Thank you for watching our basic web admin training video, where we have covered how to log into the system and make various changes to a user. If you have any technical support questions, please email us at support at agilitycg.com. If you have any questions about our new hosted offering, or if you would like information about our support contracts, which include free upgrade licenses, please send us an email at info at agilitycg.com. Check us out online for upcoming events and company news. If this video was helpful, please make sure to like our video and subscribe to our channel for more Avaya IP Office content.